All right, guys, the third party never Trump push. It's actually gaining some momentum now. This, of course, after Ryan, Speaker Ryan announced that he wasn't ready to endorse Donald Trump just yet. Yesterday, you've got conservative activists who are floating around and a lot of names that they would like to start to include on ballots across the country. Uh, they're talking former New Mexico Governor Gary Johnson, who, by the way, is poised to become a Libertarian Party nominee, uh, former Senator Tom Coburn, Senator Rand Paul, Senator Bob Sace. Uh, joining me now to discuss it all, Steve Rogers, Evan Siegfried, and Adrian Anna Cohen. All right, uh, Evan, got to start with you. We got two Trump supporters here who are going to see if they're going to knock a little sense into you uh, before the segment. Is over because you've gone out. Into that you've you've gone that's... out and actually said you'd take Hillary over Donald Trump. Uh, I should put in the caveat there. I would vote for Hillary over Donald Trump if there is no viable third party alternative. I would vote for Republicans in all other races. Asking me to vote for Donald Trump is asking me to ba betray my principles, and principles are only that if you stand by them when it's inconvenient. Give me an example of principles because people are going to be tweeting me and saying, "What the heck is this guy talking about?" Principles. Well, Someone just tweeted, "What are these principles? That where were they for the last 12 years with you guys?" For me, they've always been there. To be honest. What are they? I believe in a smaller, more limited government. I do not believe in a single payer health care system. Donald Trump has said he's going to replace Obamacare with something Hillary just the doesn't same. believe in that, though. Well, listen. Hillary Clinton also, when it comes down to her, I trust her more to manage our military forces and handle the nuclear codes than oh. Donald Trump. Donald oh. Trump has oh. repeatedly shown thin skin and terrible judgment. He did an art, there was an article about his hands being tiny, and for years he sent the writer of that an outline of his hands being, saying, Ooh. Being in the military for 38 years, I, I'm sorry, 25 years. I could tell you this. Hillary Clinton is the last person on earth you want to be commander in chief. After Benghazi, after the foreign, foreign policy that we don't have in the Mideast as a result of her, after Iraq, what you want her to be commander in chief? Vladimir Putin provokes. Donald Trump, what happens? Vladimir does he Putin, go out on a Twitter storm or does no, he go, actually no. go out and uh, he will use not the military? He will not we provoke. We could lose lives he will because not. he has such a thin skin and knee-jerk reaction. We lost their lives in Benghazi and their lives do You're matter right, to, to their victims' fam to their families. Listen, what do you I, make I, of this, though, Adriana? Is this just like childish petty? I mean, it, is. It, it, it feels like, okay, you lost. I mean, you know, exactly. you, you're going to take your ball home. You're going to cry. I mean, you lost. You fought, you fought the good fight. Exactly. You got crushed. Jump on board or... Don't say anything, but, you know, it's one thing if someone says, I don't want to vote, I'll set it out. You can debate whether that's a vote for Hillary or not. But right. you've got now perhaps a third party. What would that do to Donald Trump's chances if there was a third party? Let's it, say Ben Sass. It's, it, basically, what establishment Republicans are doing in the Never Trump crowd is they're, they've created a circular firing squad. By, by even entertaining a third party candidate, look, how did it go for Ross Perot? I mean, you're just going to hand the keys to the White House to the Democrats. Look, Donald Trump won fair and square. There were 17 candidates, and if any of them are registered with the, uh, with the GOP, they would be the Let nominees. Me ask you that. And you know what, and Charles? Excuse me one minute. They're you know just what, Charles? acting like it, sore losers. Right. It goes back to what I have been saying all along. They. <laughs> are not putting, not putting the interests of the nation first. You're putting the interests of your you ideology and your party first. I should counter in a kumbaya manner, actually, okay. where it would actually be good because you have a, a significant percentage of Republicans saying they will stay home and or vote for Hillary. Now, the stay home worry, should worry all of us. And that would imperil the House and the Senate, especially in the tight races in Ohio. Yeah, in, other words, in other words, you'll vote Hillary. If we could get a conservative uh, a third party candidate who excites that base that would otherwise stay home but they've had the to come chance. In, If they've we had could get chance. a conservative third party candidate that would excite the Ron base Paul to come out and vote race. for Kelly Ayotte, Mark Kirk, uh, Rob Portman, Kelly John Ayotte's McCain. Kelly fighting for her life just in New Hampshire. So right you're now. saying no conservative candidate and you're okay with losing no, Kelly Ayotte, Rob Portman, and other Senate seats? We're but that's someone play for the Republican team, as you said. I mean, that's somewhat presumptuous on your part. You know, I mean, again, uh, Donald Trump won. He didn't win because he brought in the least amount of votes. He won because he bought over for every two the votes cast about. for Donald Trump. There were three votes cast against him. Well, I think be the because, yeah. because I like you, Kevin, I am going to reserve the seat on the Trump train right next to me, and we're going to be like this on the Trump train. That's right, what you're going well, you know I will what? still ride with you. <laughs> See, but you got six months to turn this guy. Okay. <laughs>